Gravity feed irrigation is simple and effective and less expensive than pressurized irrigation. Irrigation companies have invested billions of dollars in pressurized irrigation systems. They are not interested in selling a gravity feed irrigation products in rich countries like Australia. Gravity feed irrigation systems are sold in poor countries like Kenya where farmers cannot afford pressurized systems. Suppose that you walk into your local irrigation supplier and say that you would like to irrigate your garden using a rainwater tank. One of the first issues raised will be the choice of pump and from that point forward gravity feed will never be mentioned. Please share this video with others so that gravity feed irrigation may one day challenge the dominant paradigm of pressurised irrigation. I will now show you a garden in Prospect in Adelaide that uses gravity feed irrigation from a rainwater tank. The garden has two irrigation zones, one for all of the flower beds and the other for the fruit trees. The irrigation system is fully automatic to allow the owners to be away from the garden for months on end. The flower beds are watered at sunset each day and the amount of water used is directly proportional to the net evaporation in the garden since the previous watering. The sunset measured irrigation controller is used for the flower bed zone. The fruit trees need to be watered less often with more water so that the water can reach the bottom of the root zone. The universal measured irrigation controller is used for the fruit tree zone to allow the irrigation frequency to be adjusted to suit the depth of the root zone. There are four rainwater tanks with a total capacity of 13,000 litres. Three of the tanks are connected so that the water level is the same in all three tanks. The irrigation system is connected to the fourth tank called the header tank. A 28 watt pump is used to transfer water from the three connected tanks to the header tank so that the header tank is always full. A part fill float valve is connected to the mains water supply and automatically maintains a low level of water in the three tanks during periods of no or low rainfall. Each zone has a solenoid valve that can operate at zero pressure. A light sensor provides the option of irrigating at night time only. The universal measured irrigation controller has an adjustable float which is set so that the irrigation of the fruit tree starts after 23 millimeters has evaporated from the evaporator and the water level reaches the low level. During the irrigation an adjustable control dripper drips water into the evaporator. After the water level had risen 23 millimetres, it reaches the high level and the irrigation stops. The cycle continues indefinitely. You can start the irrigation at any time by pressing the float down. It is very simple and low tech and so there are fewer things to go wrong. The flower bed zone is a very large zone covering all of the flower beds in both the front yard and the backyard. If a conventional pressurised irrigation system was installed using pressure compensating drippers, it could not provide adequate pressure to all of the drippers and so the single zone would need to be replaced by many zones, each with their own solenoid valve. With pressurised irrigation, the pressure at the pump outlet or the mains tap falls as the number of drippers in the zone increases. However, with gravity feed irrigation from a header tank, the pressure at the tank outlet remains the same regardless of the number of drippers. The pressure at the drippers in the flower beds is about 50 centimetres. The flower bed zone consists of five sections, each with its own isolation valve. If some of the isolation valves are turned off, the pressure at the drippers in the remaining section increases. However, because measured irrigation is used, the discharge from each of the drippers remains the same regardless of any changes in the pressure. This is a unique feature of measured irrigation that does not apply to irrigation systems that use a timer or a programmable irrigation controller. Let me briefly show you another garden in Adelaide that uses the universal measured irrigation controller. For this application, porous hose is used to irrigate a vegetable garden. The water supply is a rainwater tank on a stand. For this application, more frequent irrigation is required and so the adjustable float is set so that the irrigation starts after 11 millimetres has evaporated from the evaporator. Also, the adjustable control dripper is replaced by a short length of porous hose. I would now like to share with you some of the features of the Universal Measured Irrigation Controller. 
It is an automatic smart irrigation controller that can be used for any size irrigation system regardless of the size of the solenoid valve. It can be used for gravity feed or pressurized systems, for drip irrigation, sprinkler irrigation, porous hose irrigation, for example weeper hose or soaker hose, pressure compensating drippers or non-pressure compensating drippers. One of the disadvantages of non-pressure compensating drippers is that the water usage is normally affected by variations in the water supply pressure. However, with the Universal Measured Irrigation Controller, the water usage is independent of the water supply pressure. In fact, the water pressure can change significantly during the irrigation event without affecting the dripper discharge volumes. This is a unique feature of measured irrigation. The water usage for the Universal Measured Irrigation Controller is directly proportional to the prevailing net evaporation rate experienced by your plants. Net evaporation is evaporation minus rainfall. This is another unique feature of measured irrigation. Let me show you how to adjust the irrigation frequency. The Universal Measured Irrigation Controller is provided with an adjustable float consisting of a 7 cm diameter cylinder and 8 float rings that can slide over the cylinder to increase the outside diameter of the float. The following table shows the irrigation frequency for various float rings. The irrigation frequency is determined by the net evaporation from the evaporator between irrigation events. With no float ring, the outside diameter is 7 cm and the net evaporation between irrigation events is 32 mm. With the largest float ring, the outside diameter is 15 cm and the net evaporation is 11 mm. You also have the option of irrigating at sunset each day by using the float switch mounted on the side of the evaporator. Let me now show you how to adjust the water usage. If your plants are getting too much water, turn the control dripper anti-clockwise to increase the flow rate of the control dripper. If your plants are not getting enough water, turn the control dripper clockwise to reduce the flow rate of the control dripper. If you are using pressure compensating drippers, you need to replace the adjustable control dripper with a pressure compensating dripper. In this case, the water usage is adjusted by adjusting the surface area of the evaporator. A light sensor provides the option of irrigating at night time only. The switch on the control box has three positions, on, off and on night only. When the switch is in the on position, switch up, the irrigation will start as soon as the water level reaches the low level. The universal measured irrigation controller can be used to upgrade a tap timer or a programmable irrigation controller to measured irrigation. For complete details, download the Universal Measured Irrigation Controller user manual from the Measured Irrigation website www.measuredirrigation.com.au The Universal Measured Irrigation Controller and the Sunset Measured Irrigation Controller can be purchased from the online shop at the Measured Irrigation website. Thank you.